Hey everyone, this is Lamorna and I'm G and this is our double decker bus. <laughs> uh, we moved into our bus a couple of weeks ago now, but it has been uh, a long process getting to this point. Um, the original estimate um, by the wonderful Gareth here was... Six months. But it's actually <laughs> taken us just over two years. two years. When I had this idea of doing a conversion, I was thinking, oh, I can get all the nice cushions and oh, it'll be really fun to paint. And I was thinking about what happens here. And what actually happens is all this first. You know, it was it was months and months and months of getting the bus ready. It just looked like a building site for this amount. And then the last tiny bit, which I was like, oh, that's what I was thinking about when I was doing a conversion, is this bit. So the bus behind us, it's a 1997 Scania. It was originally a Brighton and Hove public bus. Then it went up to Leicester, it was used as a school bus. Um, we found it on eBay mm, uh, for just over £4,000. Um, and then we spent just over 20000 on the conversion. That's including all the solar um, and me getting a new license and stuff like that. Mm. We didn't actually know it was a Brighton & Hove bus until a few people messaged us saying, oh, is that, because they recognised the, the colours. Uh, and then somebody actually messaged us, said, I used to drive that bus around Brighton as a bus driver. And he gave us a load of information about it, which is really cool. All right, so before we go anywhere, we have to press the doorbell, and the doorbell is this one here. All right, let's go in. Uh, this little secret compartment contains two beautiful roll-out larder sections full of food. We've got a fridge freezer here that runs on 240 uh, and on gas. And one of the things that I didn't want to compromise on was a full-size kitchen um, uh, oven. So we've got a gas oven here. Bins are here. And then as we go through, we've got the kitchen. Now this up here shows our fresh and our gray water tanks. And then we've got the kitchen. Um, where we have been able to, we have reused, recycled and reclaimed. So the kitchen workshop was just 15 pounds. Uh, the fronts of the cabinets were new, unfortunately, but they are made out of recycled plastic. And to give us a little bit of extra space because we need as much space as we can, we've got a little bit of extra worktop here. So as we go through, we've got uh, a few multifunctional areas. Here we've got a light, nice seating area, but also this seat can roll out and we've got the table which just flips up on its hinges here. Uh, we've got the beautiful wood burner fire, which is very important to have on those cozy, cold evenings. Uh, but we do also have a little diesel heater down here for a little bit of blast of uh, heat when we need it. Now this is our booth, um, and this is actually multifunctional in so many different ways. We've got the configuration that you can see right now, but we can also unhook these the table then slots down here and then we've got some legs and we can fold out all the legs use the extra cushion and make that into sort of like a day bed or seating area or we can just fold out the two inner ones and then we've got a c-shape cozy area so lots of different options uh should we go into the bathroom <laughs> all right so i am now in the shower and this was such an awkward space to try and uh, work with because we have the wheel arches either side and this was the lowest point, which is why the shower is in the middle of the room. But we do have these handy um, shower enclosure doors. We have this beautiful sink on this side with the, the hands. This was a fruit bowl. Again, no, nothing too expensive here. Um, and then we just made a nice seat and we've got our um, mirror and cupboard here. And then on this side, we've got our composting toilet. Um, nice and simple and great for the environment as well. Um, one of the things I'm most proud of, well, two of the things are right here before we go on. 
is this. We've got wallpaper that we covered in clear plastic um, because we thought it'd be really fun to have a rainforest experience in the shower and this was as close as that we could get. Um, but it is quite good fun and uh, we weren't quite sure if it was going to work when we had the idea, but it's so far so good. And then the second thing I wanted to show you was this beautiful door. I found this picture online and managed to recreate the door pretty much as the I saw the picture, so I'm really happy with that. Okay, so <laughs> this is where this is where I work. Um, working from home means um, it's really important to to have the uh, a setup. Uh, G's got his decks here. Um, this is also a little bit of multifunctional space because we've got this table here. This slides out and we've got a few leaves so it can be a really big table if we want to. And then these are stools. You can just see here the, the seat pad. These roll out as well. So we've got two extra seats and we've got obviously more seats downstairs. So it's really nice to be able to have a multifunctional space. And this table also does fit in this little nook. So if I do want to look out of that window, because it's a nice view, then I've got that option too. Now this, um, because we've got the upstairs, we've got the office area and we've got the living area behind me, um, we thought it'd be really fun to have a room divider. So this is actually on wheels and this rolls all the way out um, so we can have that at 90 degrees. So we can really separate off the two areas or we can have it nice and open as it is right now. Okay, so welcome to the living area. There are so many fun little things here which you are going to absolutely love. Um, first of all, nice and simple, we've got a small sofa. Everything we put in this space, um, if it was a conventional size sofa, um, it just looked enormous. So it is a dinky sofa, it is also a sofa bed. So if we've got guests, they have got somewhere to sleep. Um, over here, we have got our um, TV. And the TV is on a TV lift. So it does take a few seconds, but um, it's so nice to be able to put the TV away at the end of the day um, and just have a nice cleared space. Also, it's great for when we are on the move, we don't have to worry about the TV falling down anywhere. And we've also got a little sound bar that's hidden behind there as well. We cut some slots out of the wood here so that the sound can come all the way out. Uh, now, we can normally get to this point and people are saying, that this is, looks great, Lawana, but where's the bedroom? And the bedroom is hidden um, by this secret bookcase door, which we are just finishing off at the moment. It's one of the last things that we're finishing off here. And you can see, you get to see the mechanism that's behind it. And um, so we've got cables, we've got pulleys, and the book that is going to be, the, the, the way that we open the door, we decided it was gonna be the land which is another joke. There we go. <laughs> And here is the bedroom. So the bed is an Ottoman bed. We took a, a standard Ottoman bed, um, just took away the mechanism and then rebuilt the bed frame. So we've got all the storage that goes underneath. And because we've got the dog to think about, we wanted to have her to have a little space that she could sleep. So we remade the bed frame so that we've got this little nook for her. And she does actually sleep there most of the night anyway, until the morning. Um, we managed to get the mattress in through the emergency exit, which we still got in place. Um, and then we've obviously got uh, wardrobes either side, um, which I'm sure you'll see shortly, um, and lots of storage as well as the bedside cabinet. Cool, so this is where I'll be spending some of my time when we're driving. Uh, it's a bit of a beast, a 11 litre engine. Um, hopefully we don't spend too much on fuel, but we'll see what happens with the prices. Um, but yeah, not looking forward to that. But otherwise, we haven't decided what to do with the area. But right now, just driving down the road. Follow me. So I know Le Morna mentioned before about the tank. So they actually sit underneath here. We decided particularly on this model of double-decker, 
Uh, it's got more space underneath. You lose a little bit of headroom, but gives the space for the tanks. We've got 250 litres of fresh, and by the side of it, 180 litres of grey uh, for the tanks. So the way we did this booth area, we wanted again it to be multifunctional, as practical as possible. So I'm just going to show you now the different positions it can go into. So this sits on top of there. I'll clear the top. see what's underneath. So we've got storage under both seats and these fold out just with the arms. So you've got a U-shape if you put all the cushions back in or you can go one stage further. Pull your cushions back on and you've got a little bed or a snug if it's cold in the winter you light the fire. So keeping us warm in the winter is a four kilowatt log burner. Uh, we've got a single skin flue up to here and then it changes to a twin skin. Um, for those who don't know it just alters the distance the combustibles can be away from the flue. Uh, and then behind it we've got a heat shield, there's a fireproof board with an air gap and then just a copper for the aesthetics on top keeps us warm. Uh, if we don't want to light the fire, we've got a diesel heater down here. Uh, it's a five kilowatt diesel heater, really economic, um, and just heats up this space quite nicely in a short space of time. Uh, while we're talking about keeping warm, uh, we fully insulated in the bus, so we've got 40 mil king span in all the walls. 40 mil in the ceiling downstairs, 25 mil upstairs just because there's slightly less headroom. Um, everything where we didn't insulate, we expanded foam, so just in the walls in here, it's a little bit difficult with the curves. Um, and then we've got a membrane across everything to keep it hopefully moisture proof, uh, which fingers crossed so far we're doing okay. So just in case we're bored with a view at that side of the bus, we made ourselves a little breakfast bar over here, which works very easily. Pull the seat out. that up. It's probably eat more of our meals on this side than actually over at the booth. So we talked about heating if it's getting too cold in the winter. Also in the summer if it's getting really hot we decide we'll have a little bit of air conditioning. So we've got a portable unit that lives upstairs where we can bring it down. Um, and rather than have big tubes trying to get them out of small bus windows, what I did was just cut a vent. Um, so you just pull that out, slide the air conditioning unit in and put the hose straight out the back. All our windows, there's a slight solar tint, uh, so that's about 80% heat reduction on these. Uh, the windows that we've boarded up, so behind here and behind the kitchen, they're fully white, that's 100% um, solar reduction. So we're always fighting the elements, we didn't want to lose too many windows because we like the view. So we decided that was the best thing to go for and hopefully it works out. So throughout the bus, we've got LED lights, nice and economic for using as little battery power as possible. Um, we started just with the spotlights, realized that wasn't quite enough. So added in just the LEDs on the side, which are dimmable, which is quite nice in the evening. Um, the other thing we did with lighting, we tried to do some fun stuff. So if you want to come forward a little bit, we've got a button here, it says push once, it was part of the original bus. And that just turns on some stair lights. Let's take the shoes off. Uh, and you can come on up. Cool, while we're talking about lights, we've got an original bus button here that used to be a bell if you didn't tell the driver you want to get off. Press that one and your lights come on on the stairs. Um, so the top of the office here, we wanted to make a bit of a feature. This is a beautiful piece of Wellingtonia. It's a Californian redwood. Um, and we found it at a local sort of timber merchant, very roughly cut. We spent an entire day sanding it through all the grits of paper. We join two pieces together, cut it to shape, um, and I think you'll agree, quite a nice little desk there. Underneath the office, we want to make it multifunctional, so the desk slides out and can rotate into a bit of a table. The stools slide out as extra storage and places for guests to sit. And then inside the drawers, 
we've got USB chargers. We didn't want leads everywhere, so we've hidden all those inside so we can just charge phones and battery packs inside without making a mess. Cool, so just beneath the office here, we like to keep some parts of the bus. This is the old spy hole, so the driver would look through downstairs up to a mirror and be able to see all the naughty kids in the back of the bus doing graffiti on the windows. Another little feature we've got on this side is the hanging chair. Um, so in order to make that safe, I actually strengthened pretty much the entire roof all up to about here um, before we insulate it. So the roof design has horizontal uh, aluminium support bars that go across and I basically created a grid system all the way through uh, and bolted that on so you can sit on there and swing around and not go anywhere. Um, talking about the roof, another reason I wanted to strengthen it is so we could have a little garden on top. So if you follow me, we'll go and check it out. Uh, so up on the roof, we're up at 4.2 metres. Uh, we've got a little bit of astroturf you might just be able to see in front. Just we thought it'd be nice to have a garden up on top, be able to sit and have a beer. I did put some safety rails, some extra ones in as well. So the most important thing to up here is obviously the solar panels. We've got six 330 watt panels, giving us about two and a half kilowatts. Um, you might also notice the chimney up there. Obviously that's removable. So when we're driving, we'll just pop that out, put a cap on, and then we can put it back on when we're finished. With the panels, uh, everything goes down to the garage where our sort of systems are. We've got our washing machines and our batteries, and we'll probably pop down there now and I can talk you a little bit more through how all the power works. Uh, so another thing we decided to have was a garage in the bus and the initial plans we didn't have anything here um, but we're really glad we did. So once you go in you'll see we've got a full size washing machine, we've got our gas tanks, we've got all our solar set up, a boiler and plenty space for toys and stuff like that. Uh, so you hop in and I'll talk you through the setup. We've got a full Victron set up there with two 40, 48 volt lithium batteries. That gives us four and a half kilowatts uh, with a discharge rate of 80%. Um, those batteries are good for 6,000 cycles. That's about 11 years of power that we'll have um, for not much more than lead acid batteries. The difference is buying a 48 volt. Really encourage you guys to research that. And then what we've got is a step down from a 48 volt to 12 volt, which runs all our power uh, on the 12 volt circuits, the water pump, the diesel heater, the lights in the bus. And then through the inverter, that gives us our 240 uh, ring mains to all our sockets for laptops and TVs and stuff like that. Uh, the boiler, uh, that also runs on the LPG gas tanks, which we've got in the garage. Um, it stays on the whole time again through the inverter. Um, it's just a, a regular household built, uh, boiler, but very efficient. And then... Oh, look at that. I got the, just got the right amount of water there. I always try to have the right amount of water just to maximise the gas usage. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, we're really excited to get on the road and start bus life. It's not been our first time. Yeah, that's true. Um, a couple of years ago, we were very fortunate and had a 12 month backpacking trip. And half of that, we lived in a van. We traveled from Canada uh, all the way down through America, Mexico and Central America. So yeah, the dream is really that we'll spend a little bit of time traveling around the UK, just get used to driving the bus. Um, You've got to pass your test. I've got you? my test next week, um, fingers crossed, which will be fine. Um, and then what we'd love to do is take it abroad and maybe head down towards Spain. Now we're not going to be driving this like a normal camper van, uh, partly because of fuel economy. Um, so we haven't designed it in that way either. So things like bookcases, we're happy to take the books off when we're going to move because we don't do it that often. So we're looking to park up for a few months, see if we like it move on, try a new area, new experiences. Yeah, and obviously driving a double-decker bus has the challenges of things like not being able to go under low bridges or being able to go over certain bridges which are uh, weight restricted, uh, as well as certain tight corners and roads. But double-decker buses are all over the UK, 
So um, it's just a matter of making sure that we go down the right roads and don't end up as one of those memes that you see with the top of the double decker sliced off because it's gone down the bridge. I've <laughs> <laughs> gone the wrong way. Um, yeah, we're both hoping to do work on the road as well. Um, I do a little bit of filming myself and done all sorts of bits and bobs and you always keep yourself busy. Yeah, I'm a nutritionist and um, I've just qualified recently as an ICF ACC coach. So that means I can coach anybody around any kind of areas of life where you have goals that you want to achieve or challenges that seem to be getting in the way. Um, it's been a really nice uh, addition to the nutrition coaching um, that I already do. So that's, I've been working remotely for good few years now, um, whilst we've been traveling and whilst we've been working on the bus. Uh, so really excited to continue with that um, as, we, uh, as we make a move. And we are on social media guys, you want to give us a follow. Um, Instagram, we bought a double decker, we'll pop straight up. Uh, we haven't done a lot with the account, we've been super busy on the build, but hopefully once we get on the road I'll get my camera back out and start filming get some nice content so give us a follow and if you've got any questions super happy to help out yeah, we've learned so much insulating plumbing electrics gas so I'd be quite happy to do it all again in a fraction of the time it took me first time <laughs> so just give us a shout we'll help you out Water. Okay. It's cool, huh? Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.